We've already explained the third column, which has complements and substitutes. So now we need to explain the first two columns, which have the words normal and inferior in them. Often They also have, have the word gif in there. We'll, I'll explain that later. So for normal or inferior, we have to look at income change. But there is no income change here. There's only a price change. The price of X has fallen. That's why the budget concern changed from BL1 to BL3. In order to get information about normal and inferior from this price change, we have to construct an imaginary budget constraint. The imaginary budget constraint here is BL2. BL2 is correct because the imaginary budget constraint needs to be parallel to the new budget constraint that is parallel to BL3, and BL2 is parallel to BL3, so it satisfies that condition. And the imaginary budget constraint has to be tangent to the original indifference curve. And BL2 is tangent to U0, so it is tangent to the original indifference curve, so it does satisfy that condition as well. So BL2 is the imaginary budget constraint. So we're going to use the motion from BL2 to a C or D or E or F or G to determine whether the, the goods are normal or inferior. A isn't important here because moving from A to the new budget constraint wouldn't be a parallel shift in anything. So, so we're moving from, from B to the new point. Let's start with the consumer who ends up at point C with indifference curve U. This consumer, of course, doesn't start at B, it starts at A, but we're ignoring A for this part because we need information about normal or inferior. So we pretend he starts at B, or we just measure things. Let's, let's not pretend. Let's just say we measure the income effect starting at B. So from B to C, what happens is that X has gone up because when you go from B to C, you go to the right, and Y has gone down because C lies below B. And this has been this is done in the context of income increasing. Of course, income didn't really increase, but it's as if income increased. So we have as if income increasing, x increasing, and y decreasing. That means x is normal and y is inferior. So in the first row of the table, I have x being normal and y being inferior. Let's go to the next person. We start out at B, we end up at D with indifference curve U1. D lies to the right of B, so X has gone up. D lies above B, so Y has gone up. The motion from B to D is as if income goes up. So both of these are going to be normal goods because in response to something like an increase in income, they increase. So X is going to be normal and Y is going to be normal for this person. So that's on y on the u1 line, I get normal for x and normal for y. Let's go to the next person. We start out at b and then end up at e with indifference curve u2. e lies to the right of b, and so x has gone up. e lies above b, and so y has gone up. The motion from b to e is as if income goes up. So both of these are going to be normal goods. Therefore, in the table, under the row for U2, X is normal and Y is normal. Let's go to the next person. Next person, we start out at B and we end up at F. F lies to the left of B and therefore X has gone down. F lies above B and therefore Y has gone up. The motion from B to F is as if income has gone up. So let's think about X. Income goes up, X goes down, that's an inferior good. So under X for person U3, we're going to have inferior. And that's what we, in the table, that's what we have. Now let's think about Y. It's as if income goes up, and in response Y goes up. So Y is a normal good. So in the table under row U3, Y needs to be normal, and indeed it is. Finally, the person who ends up at point G. We begin our measurement for the income effect at point B. We end up at point G. G lies to the left of B, therefore X has gone down. G lies above B, and therefore Y has gone up. The motion from B to G is as if income has risen. So income goes up, X goes down, X is inferior. 
So the last row for x should say inferior, and it does. Income goes up, y goes up, y should be normal. So the last row for y should have normal, and that indeed is what it has. The only remaining thing to explain in the table is the word Giffen. Remember we have a change in the price of x in this graph. And let's look at what happens at point G for indifference curve U4. Let's look at x. Well, I already wrote there x goes down. But I want you to notice something that has to do with point A, which is that x lies to the left of point A. Now, there's nothing imaginary about A. A is where the guy started. And if his indifference curve is U4, G is where he ends up. So let's forget the whole income effect, imaginary budget constraint thing. Just forget about point B. Just think about point A. The guy that has indifference curve U4, he starts out at A, he ends up at G. In other words, X for him has fallen in response to a fall in the price of X. Sketch the demand curve. Price of X versus X. You have an initial point. X falls from that point. I mean, the price of X falls from that point. In response, the amount of X falls. So you get a new point like this, which corresponds to a fall in the price of X leading to a fall in the quantity demanded of x. Join the dots. Okay. That's a demand curve. But you've probably never seen a demand curve like this before. Because it's an upward sloping demand curve. What this shows is that demand curves are not always downward sloping. If you start out with an indifference curve of u0 and you end up with an indifference curve like u4, the demand curve is not a downward sloping demand curve, it's an upward sloping demand curve. This kind of good we call a Giffen good. So a Giffen good has an upward sloping demand curve. And we'll talk about Giffen goods more in the next section. Let me just briefly say G is the only place where we can have a given good. Clearly, since we have a change in the price of X, a given good is only relevant for changes in X. For a given good, we don't measure from B, we measure from A. And starting from A, the only place where X falls, quantity demanded for X falls instead of rises, is point G. So we only have one entry for given in the table, and that's that's for the guy who has indifference curve U4.